Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Sophia Perez, the program coordinator for the Humanities Council. I'm here with our ASAP coordinator, Maria Manalo, and, um, <laughs> and we're going to be doing a quick info session about the ASAP program. A little bit of housekeeping. Maria is going to be basically facilitating this, but I will just be keeping an eye on the comments in the chat. So if you have any questions, go ahead and just post them up in the chat and I will relay them to Maria. She has a PowerPoint presentation and then um, there'll be like an open question and answer time after the presentation as well. Um, and if you'd like any follow-up info, you can reach out to ASAP, that's A-S-A-P at nmhcouncil.org. Um, and you can either send a quick question, request a meeting, um, and either Maria or I, or even Leo, will all you know work together to, to help clarify any questions you may have. Um, this was a very last minute uh, funding opportunity that came from the National Endowment for the Humanities. So as um, the Northern Marianas region for that larger federal uh, fund, we're doing our best to push out that money as quickly as possible to our community. So we are definitely in your corner trying to help you get your application through. So please don't uh, to hesitate to ask questions, set up meetings, uh, get whatever information you need. Um, but yeah, with that said, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Maria. And um, thanks again for being here, everyone. All right, thank you for, for that introduction, Sophia. All right, so we're going to start with the info session, American Satva Amalau Program. Let's see here, let me go to the next slide. All right, so the American Satva Amalau Program is funded by the National Endowment for Humanities under the American Rescue Plan of 2021. Okay, so before we start going into the ASAP program, we're going to just go through the mission and vision statement that was established through the Council's Strategic Master Plan for 2021 and to 2025. And um, our Council's mission is to navigate and explore the human experience of the Indigenous and diverse peoples of the Commonwealth by enriching their lives through research, dialogue, programs, and publication. And then with that, our vision is to advance the humanities, to understand our history and to explore our world today, to discover the marketplace of ideas, to protect the value of language and culture, to celebrate our human identity and to shape our future through the power of discourse. Let me give you a moment to look at the goals that we have here at the council. And out of the five goals, for goal number one is to preserve and promote the indigenous language and cultures in the NMI. Goal number two, to develop and improve educational programs in literacy and language. Goal number three, increase publication and scholarship in the humanities. Number four, promote the diversity of experience and perspectives within the NMI. Number five, provide capacity building activities for individuals to acquire the skills and tools to create their own humanities content and programs. Okay. And these goals will be very helpful when you're working on your project narrative, if you're planning to apply funding for humanities programming. Okay. So the primary purpose of the ARP funding is to prevent prepare for, respond to, and recover from the coronavirus. This, this uh, line here is, you're gonna need to justify this in your budget narrative um, for the use of funds. Okay, oops. All right, so for this grant opportunity, there is no matching costs or car share requirements tied to these supplemental funds. The council does not require subrecipients to cost share or match for emergency relief funding. And then we do ask that if your organization has already received ARP funding to please avoid overlapping these costs that you're applying for. Basic 
eligible criteria eligibility criteria um it must be a CNMI nonprofit organization, government agency, or accredited public or 501c3 institution for higher education. Um, you must have a DUNS number. You must address how your organization has been adversely impacted by the pandemic, consistent with the purpose of the Mary American Rescue Plan of 2021. And that was the previous slides here this one here, the primary purpose, to prevent, prepare for, respond to, and recover from the coronavirus. Okay, and then the last two is you must not have been suspended or barred, and you must not be delinquent on federal debt. There are five funding opportunities you can choose from with the ASAP program. And one is humanities programming, general operating costs, strategic planning and capacity building efforts related to preparing, responding to and recovering from the coronavirus. Expansion due to the efforts of the coronavirus for outdoor and virtual humanities programming and engagement or similar activities to transition from traditional environments to those that are more accessible and or equity assessment and planning related to the coronavirus and the economic crisis. Okay, so humanities programming, the NEH definition of humanities includes, but is not limited to, the study and interpretation of the following language, both modern and classical linguistics, literature, history, jurisprudence, philosophy, archeology, span comparative religion, ethics, the history, criticism, and theory of the arts, those aspects of the social science which have humanistic content and employ humanistic methods, and the study and application of the humanities to the human environment with particular attention to reflecting our diverse heritage, traditions, and history, and the relevance of the humanities to the current conditions of national life. The council continues to define it a little bit further uh, or break it down a little bit more. Um, the study of how people um, process and document the human experience. And then since humans have been able to, we have used philosophy, religion, religion, uh, literature, religion, history, and language to understand and record our world. The council supports programs and projects that involve the above categories, including archeology, span indigenous culture, and language jurisprudence, international relations, and more. You can visit our website at nmhcouncil.org, and you can also find a strategic master plan there too. Ineligible humanities projects. And items, okay. So the council would not support the following. This is when we normally have our other grant opportunities. Um, that would be direct action or planning of direct action regarding public or policy concerns, bias or one-sided projects, scholarship or fellowship, building or construction, equipment purchases, um, fundraising for profit, food, drinks, and entertainment, activities that have political or religious purposes, and then general operations and administration and then ongoing programs. Okay. So with the ASAP funding, it's a little bit different this time around. There is also the funding you can request for is general operations. And that's the difference this time with the ASAP funding. Okay, for your humanities um, project narrative, these are a few things that we will look out for. These are the goals and objectives. Um, your project activities and the timeline, humanities content, your audience, um, how you do your evaluation, um, personnel and organization or group that are also involved. Yes, and feel free to consult the staff, the council staff when preparing the project description. Since the complete and concise description of your project proposed project is mandatory. Okay. Here are some of the 
<clears throat> samples of projects that were done through the council. And um, we have here on the left the Rifalawash and Chamorro children's songs of Saipan. And then on to this, the second and third screenshots, we have um, the battles of Saipan and Tinian film. And then a recent awardee, Mr. Jack Doyle, he is working on an animation for Chamorro oral stories. And then the last one on your right is a video that was pushed out during the Marianas History Conference on the seafaring community in the CNMI. Okay, so other than that, we will still have some films that were done. And educational projects as well. Um, 500 cells with their training for trainers program. And sometimes you see them on Sundays um, doing their Sunday sales. And then you have Master Blacksmith here and uh, Let's Learn Tomorrow on your right. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the funding opportunities you can apply for. And this would be a general operating cost is one of the categories. General operating costs for your organizations, you must be humanities focused and how the council will find that out would be on your mission statement. Um, that would qualify you to apply for this category. Operating costs are the ongoing expenses incurred from the normal day-to-day -day of running a business organization. Common operating costs may include rent, equipment, inventory costs, marketing, payroll, insurance, and funds allocated for research and development. Operating costs can be found and analyzed by looking at an organization's income statement. Um, costs can include supplies, cleaning supplies, um, fees for utilities, your phone bill or internet, marketing, advertisement and promotion, controllable expense like employee uniform, repairs and maintenance on equipment and premises, service contract, office supplies and janitorial supplies and services, non-controllable expenses like cash handling and credit card fees, payroll processing fees, accounting and professional fees and employee recruiting costs. Our next funding opportunity you can choose from is the strategic planning and capacity building efforts related to preparing, responding to, and recovering from the coronavirus. For strategic, strategic planning is the art of creating specific business strategies, implementing them and evaluating the results, executing the plan in regard to the organization's overall long-term goals or desires. It is a concept that focuses on integrating various departments such as accounting, finance, marketing, and human resource within a company to accomplish its strategic goals. And the costs that you can find under strategic planning may include venue. Travel for this program opportunity is, um, is not allowed for both foreign and domestic, unfortunately. Uh, team building skills and activities is another cost. Food or drinks. Uh, time spent coordinating ahead of time, time spent analyzing data or previous strategic plans, and then the cost of a facilitator. Capacity building is defined as the process of developing and, and strengthening the skills, instincts, abilities, and process and resources that organizations and community need to survive, adapt, and thrive in a fast changing world. <clears throat> and the costs that can fall under capacity building could be professional development, um, of staff and board members, opportunity for peer learning, networking, or leadership development, creating or re-examining organizational plans, initiating collaboration with other nonprofits, and developing new resources of earned income. For strategic planning and capacity building, and pretty much all of the funding opportunities you can choose from on this you must remember 
that all requests for funding in this category must be justified or directly related to preparing, responding to, and recovering from the coronavirus. All right, so the last two we have is expansion due to the efforts of coronavirus for outdoor virtual humanities programming and engagement or similar activities to transition, transition from traditional environments to those that are more accessible. An expansion may include technical or consultant needs related to the digital transition or in support of preservation and access program. Equipment costs for this grant opportunity, you cannot exceed 20% of the amount you are requesting for. It can be less than or equal to 20%, okay? Um, accommodation necessary for outdoor programming and then costs associated with expanding website capabilities. All right, equity assessment and planning related to the coronavirus and economic crisis. This is the last funding opportunity you can choose from. Remember that these are an and or option. So for equity assessment planning, you can be um, creation of diversity and inclusion policies that empower marginalized groups that would fall under your diversity as in who. And then your research into appropriate equity assessment methods. If you notice that there is a need in your organization that you're not addressing those marginalized groups, then in your planning method is inclusion is how on um, your, edu uh, your ex execution of organization equity assessment is your what, your social equity and how you're, you will apply that into your organization. This is one of the funding opportunities. And the last one. Okay. So moving on, this is the actual application for the ASAP program. And you can find it on SurveyMonkey. Um, the application closes on September 30, 2021. Um, for the questions one, you just would have to read through the guidance certification and acknowledge by just clicking the box. And then you have um, the start date for your proposed project. And that would have to be on or after August 1st, 2021. And then the last one is to make sure that your funding has been expanded, expanded by November 30, 2022. That will be your project period end date. Okay, so we we'll would ask some basic information of your organization, which would include the name, mission or purpose statement, organization's location, it can be either Tinian, Saipan, or Rhoda, project director's name, the email address, and your director's telephone number. We would also need to know your website. If you don't have a website, maybe a Facebook thing could be okay. Um, then another requirement would be a DUNS number. For questions 12 and 13, EIN and SAM registration, it's encouraged, but it's not required. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And then your eligibility status, that would be if either you're a nonprofit organization, a government agency or a higher institution. If you are a nonprofit organization, then here on question 15, there's an upload option and you can put in the document, either a PDF or an, a JPEG image of um, your, certificate, your certificate of incorporation as a nonprofit. Okay, so question 16 and 17, this is the, the drop down list of what would be best applied to your organization, what would you fall under? And then, yes, yeah, so, so 16 would be primary, 17 would be your secondary. And these are questions that NEH requires of us to answer. <laughs> All right. um, 
Another NEH requirement would be anticipated jobs, question 18 and 19, jobs created through the ASAP funding or jobs preserved with the ASAP funding. Um, questions 21, uh, 20 and 21 are both the primary ASAP funding usage and your secondary primary, uh, secondary ASAP funding usage is to create jobs, preserve jobs, sustain or maintain general operations, create humanities programs, sustain humanities programs, implement new humanities activities, sustain existing humanities activities or other. Okay, so these are all questions that are required for us to answer to NH. slide. All right, question number 25 on the top left corner. Uh, we do ask uh, for applicants to write, to have a written description of the coronavirus pandemic impact. And you may cite past, present anticipated impacts such as revenue loss, number of jobs lost, or the need for funds to retain jobs, lower audiences or attendance figures and more. Uh, just a short disclaimer that the comment boxes on SurveyMonkey, they don't really do well with um, copy and pasting uh, texts that are, have like bullet points or in tables. So for this, it's just, just, just uh, the text itself would be great. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So question 27 would be where you would upload the budget form. Uh, it's an Excel document you can download on our website. And then we do ask applicants after you finish uh, filling out that budget form to export it as a PDF file. Uh, SurveyMonkey, unfortunately, doesn't have the capabilities of uploading Excel files. And then question number 26 will um, show you where you can find the questions uh, where you can upload your budget narratives for these categories for the funding opportunity. Okay, so this is our budget form. So the funding opportunities you can choose from are on columns B, C, D, and F. And then on column A is a list of items here that you can find further instructions on the sh second sheet that's labeled ASAP budget funding instructions. Okay. Um, please bear in mind that the costs that you, um, the amount that you requesting for on your budget form would need to match your budget narrative as well. Okay. Next, we have here general operating costs. So if your organization is thinking of applying for this, then you would look at question 28 or 29. They're both the same questions. You just have two options. One is a 500, well, both of it is a 500 word maximum. You can put your text in the comment box on question 28. If you have, again, bullet points or tables that are in your narrative, then you can upload your PDF file on question number 29. Okay. Budget narrative. What would be, what would you put in your budget narrative? Personal costs, fringe benefits, um, Project director and participants are responsible for any taxes, fees, or other obligations incurred as a result of paying personal costs. Fees are honorary based on standard rates ranging from fifty to two hundred dollars. Honorary stipends for services, which are fees that are not legally or traditionally required. Uh, fees. A fee is usually given to someone who works in a consultant capacity or something similar. Then for again, travel is not allowed for this funding opportunity. Uh, supplies for items such as pens, papers, tape, 
UV, UV germicidical lamps, hand sanitizer, and etc. Rental of facility and equipment. Again, um, for purchases of equipment, it must be less than or equal to 20% of the amount you are requesting for. Then there's the fees associated with telephone or internet, um, printing and copying fees, and other all other expenses except indirect costs. Okay, so question 34, if you click on strategic planning, it's similar to general operating costs, then you would submit your budget narrative on question 34 or 35. For expansion budget narrative on the third, on your um, fourth bullet, sorry. Then that would be on question 36 or 37. And then for equity assessment and planning related to the coronavirus or the economic crisis would be on questions 38 or 39. Please remember to explain how the proposed activities fulfill the primary purpose of the ARP funding, and that is to prepare, prevent, I mean, to prevent, prepare for, respond to, and recover from the coronavirus. Okay, after that, we have for humanities programming, which is the second bullet here on question 26. There are two added questions. One is the project title and your um, project narrative. For your project narrative, we do ask to have a maximum of 1000 words and then you can upload the PDF file on question 31 in one of the buttons. And then question 32 would be where you would upload or insert your comment, the, the text box here for your budget narrative. So um, the last two questions that you, that's on SurveyMonkey will be the publicity and recognition. And then you would have question 42 is just pretty much an acknowledgement. You would need to have your electronic signature. So basically you will just need to type out your first name and last name after reading the grant agreement and certification. Okay. All right, so after the your application has been submitted and come the date for for um, the council to review. This is how the process would be, will go about. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna have two uh, council, humanities council staff uh, and three board members be part of the review committee. Uh, they will make the recommendations to the board and then the board will be the final decision-making authority. If your um, application gets approved, there will be a award letter, a notice of award and or a contract, which would have you to monitor the expenditure of the project funds, ensure that all commitments and obligations of project funds occur only during the authorized grant period as set forth in the grant award agreement includes keeping accounting records of the project that are separate from the rec records concerning any other organization activity or projects in the general accounting system. Uh, receipts for expenditure and contribution to the project must be retained and documents the time spent by project personnel and participants on project activity orientation.
Nairobian orientation. And then, okay, so when post when you're done with your the grant award and you reach the closing after the completion of the project by the deadline set on the notice of award applicants must submit a grant report with the following evaluation documentation of any events held attendance and final report So yes, that, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it for our info session. Thanks so much, Maria. Um, if any participants would like to chime in with questions, um, now is a good time or you can also just email again asap asap at nmhcouncil.org um i'll give you guys a couple minutes if you want to just offer your questions i see you Giovanna Lynn, how you doing um just uh reach out if you have any questions but let's see well it's about 10 a.m. now, and it's looking like there's no questions at the moment. But again, uh, the council is here to support you through the application process. So please don't hesitate um, to reach out with questions or comments. And um, as Maria said, we have until September 30th to collect applications. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll be hearing from you in the coming weeks. But, yeah, that's it. I think that's a wrap. Thanks again so much, Maria, for the presentation. Thank you too, Sophia. Bye-bye. Right.